Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Coach's Corner. Zach Vai sitting down with the associate head coach of the women's soccer team, Nick Boquette. Uh, first of all, thanks for giving us a couple minutes. Oh, my pleasure. And the last time we spoke, we were looking ahead to Quinnipiac. That ended up being a resounding victory for the University at Albany. Four to one decision in a game where uh, Kiana Rugar and Vivian Vega just sort of control things. Talk about your takeaways from that game. Yeah, we were good that game. Uh, it, and it was a different sort of setup for us where we didn't really have it our way at first. Uh, we had to kind of, they threw a couple things at us where we had to figure out on the fly. You know, they were really committed to, to playing a certain way. Uh, and at first, you know, we didn't, we didn't really know what to do with it. But you saw the players kind of all get together, kind of huddle together uh, and figure that out in the run of the play, which is what our game is all about. You know, we don't call timeouts. We don't have times to call them over and discuss tactics. You know, we get one chance to do that at halftime. Um, but so much of our game is, has to be figured out dynamically by the players. And so they were forced to do that in the Quinnipiac game. Um, Whereas at first we kind of didn't have it our way, but then we worked into the first half and, and started really, after the first 20 minutes or so, we started kind of imposing our will much more on the game. Uh, when we did that, you know, we looked quite dangerous. We were quite good, uh, and it was, it was really our game at that point. You know, we score a goal, goal late in the first half, and that kind of set the tone for the second half. So the second half was, was more of the same. Was we had an idea that at that point we had figured it out, and so our quality is kind of showing through uh, the more the, the second half went on. So we go 2-0 up. Uh, they got one back uh, due to a couple, of, you know, a couple of things we could have done better. But then at that point, you know, we got back to what we were, we, what we were doing, what we had figured out, you know, and again, kind of imposed our will and showed our quality uh, against them. So that's how that happened. A uh, good result for us because, you know, in the past we haven't been that dynamic on the road. You know, when teams threw curveballs at us, if we weren't firing on all cylinders, we kind of had to fight and just kind of claw. This time, we did that and we figured it out. So we, we had yeah, the, the better of the play for the large majority of the game. I mentioned Rugar. She goes for five points, two goals and assists. And then Viv Vivian Vega always has a knack for scoring goals. How important is it to have those two, and you just mentioned the phrase, firing on all cylinders, especially as you head into the, to the conference season? Yeah, very important. Uh, when the two of them get going, especially when, they're, when their chemistry kind of ignites, if you will, uh, they're a force. Uh, they realize either one of them has, a, has the ability to change the game at any, at any given time. So when they start kind of playing off one another and, and playing into spaces where the other's not and really kind of working it out between the two of them, they're a, they're a very, very dangerous duo. Uh, they're dynamic. Uh, they can hurt you from different, in different ways. They can get in behind. They can score from in front of the, the defense. So, you know, them... them Getting going any game is is just it's outstanding for us because you know, that makes us so dangerous and that makes defense really the, their the opposition's defense really worry about what we're doing and stop thinking about how they can be dangerous. So uh, no, it's it's important for us. Uh, you saw kind of what they what they're capable of on, on several occasions in, against Quinnipiac, and you know that's not the first time this year they they score goals a lot. So you know we're hoping to you know to keep that keep that going and bottle it up and be able to use it over and over again. Uh, moving on from the Quinnipiac game, you guys had Seton Hall just recently. A game that goes into double overtime in the 101st minute, uh, Seton Hall puts one on the board. Uh, and, and that's a game that you outshot Seton Hall. And you look back, you had some regrets about that game, correct? Yeah, we're disappointed. Um, it's, it's one of those games we, we didn't play well enough probably to win. Um, I don't know if we played well enough to, to lose, or if we played poorly enough to lose. It, it might have been a little bit unfair. Kind of a fluky, fluky goal that bounced around in the box and... Their, their, their player was there at the right, right moment and right time. Um, but at the end of the day, what we have to take from it is what can we do better? And on the day, we just we weren't, we weren't quite good enough to, to make a difference. Uh, Sunday afternoon game away. Um, you know, and so we'll take things from that. You know, how can we find those situations uh, and, and make it more like the Quinnipiac game where we figure it out and figure out how we can be better that day as opposed to kind of just sitting and fighting without, without any real plan. Uh, despite the frustration and walking away with a loss in the 101st minute, is there anything uh, a positive or a bright spot you took away from that game? Yeah, there's there, there's some. A, we're going to hope to learn from it. You know, you know, we, we talked about it afterwards. Uh, B, there's it's not as if everyone played poorly. Uh, you know, one of the players who's been doing a lot of work for us that hasn't got a whole lot of credit for is Caitlin Palchus. Um, she plays in our center midfield role, and she's kind of the engine of our team and, and the heartbeat of our team. Where you know, offensively and defensively, uh, most things look to her uh, for initiation. Um, she kind of controls our organization, and she fills in spots that need to be filled in. Uh, and she's really kind of quietly been uh, an outstanding uh, player for us. Um, so you see, you see those kind of players when, when everything's going wrong sometimes. Uh, and not that everything was going wrong against Seton Hall, but enough was going wrong where 
you know, you, you kind of saw that she was she was the one that we looked to, and, and she's been very good for us all year, and, and, and she was good for us again yesterday. All right, looking ahead, you guys have Rhode Island in your final tune-up before you open up America East play uh, on the road at UMBC. Uh, talk about what Rhode Island brings to the table and, and your expectations for your team. Yeah, so Rhode Island is a is a familiar opponent. We play them year in, year out, and they're a lot like an America East team, uh, to be honest. They, they have some good qualities. They have some athletic uh, girls going forward who can score goals and are fast and are it can be tricky, uh, and they have some pretty physical uh, defenders and midfielders. So a lot like the teams we'll, we'll face uh, in the America East. So it's a perfect dress rehearsal for us. We're going to Rhode Island, so we're traveling to there. We're playing on a nice grass surface, just like we will be when we open up our conference at UMBC. So it, it works for us. It's a dress rehearsal. We, ex you know, we expect to win. Uh, we expect that our qualities uh, will show through, and we'll be able to figure, that, figure out the game at an early stage, uh, just like we'll expect to do when we open the conference. All right, well, best of luck in your final tune-up. Thanks very much. All right, that'll do it for this week's edition of Coach's Corner. As always, you can catch us next week when Coach and I sit down and look back at Rhode Island and UMBC and, of course, look ahead to the rest of the America East schedule now. For Nick Boquette, I'm Zach Bai, and we'll see you next time.